Are you ready? Episode number 19, REI 360 show, Jason and Chris. Today's topic is direct mail, the three must do direct mail campaigns for real estate investors. You wanna jump in? What are the three? What are the top what, three? What are the three? Well, I mean, there's a lot of uh, you know marketing techniques and mailings in general, but if if you're not, as a real estate investor, if you are not doing direct mail, you need to, because it is so, it is so effective and it's easier than you think, and we're gonna talk about ways to automate it as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first one, and by far, probably the most motivated sellers come from or probates, you know, also known as like estate sales and things like that. Sure. So somebody dies, the property gets, uh, you know, uh, passed down to their heirs. They got to take over the property and figure out kind of how to get rid of it. Yeah. Obviously, handled by an estate attorney or like the heirs. Oftentimes, don't want to deal with exactly. it. Exactly. Um, uh, most often, they want to turn that property into cash. Exactly. Like, they don't want the house. Exactly. So think about like, you know, God forbid your grandmother dies and you know you're you take you you own the property and you live out of state. Chances are, I mean, think about your grandmother's house that was probably renovated in the 50s, you probably are like, Grandma, you need to put some granite in there. Right. And she's like, I'm not putting granite in this. This house is nice. Like, what's granite? <laughs> so what happens is you, they typically need work. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of the times the family lives out of state. So whatever the case is, there's a huge um, urgency to sell the property. You know, they could just list the property on MLS, but it sometimes just makes sense to just sell it to a, a buyer for cash. For sure. And oftentimes some of the best deals we see at yep. HMB and things we bought ourselves come from estate sales. Exactly. Some Ex of the best deals out there, no e doubt. Exactly. So that's uh, one direct mailing campaign. We're going to talk about getting the list and what to, what to mail them in a second. Next one is absentee owners. You know, somebody owns a house, but they don't live in it. Uh, it's either vacant or they have tenants in there. And to take that to the next step, it's an absentee owner who actually lives out of state, which makes right. it even better. So I own a property in Maryland, but I live in Texas. Um, you know, and another caveat with that is you want to make sure when you mail to them that you're mailing to the, uh, those guys that have at least purchased the property in 2003 or before, 10 plus years, because chances are they have equity in the property if they bought it then. Right. And you know, who knows what their situation is now? You don't want to mail to somebody who just bought a property. Right. Um, they're probably not looking to sell it then. Mm. So that's another good motivated lead. Plus, there's a good chance that they're having problems with the property. Absolutely. As we've talked about when we talk about the buy side, you know, working with our clients and other people at RI360 is don't buy properties out of your area. And yeah. places you don't know. Um, I mean, maybe you really, really do know some other area. Long story short, it's so common for people to have problems with properties that they're nowhere near and can't manage properly, which turn into good buys on exactly. the other side. Yeah, and then the third, it's probably the third most important one that most people overlook, although realtors do this a lot, but real estate investors overlook, is either mailing to like a farm area, an area you really know and you really want to saturate and concentrate in, mm -hmm. or an area that you just bought or sold a property in. You're an expert in that area. You just flipped the house in that neighborhood. Why not? mail directly to all the neighbors and say, you know, Mrs. You know, attention, Mrs. Smith, I just purchased a property in your neighborhood. I want to purchase another one. Look how nice it is. And yep. if you time it out the right way, you can actually even find a buyer from that neighborhood to come into that property. You Very know, true. Two birds of one stone. But that's another good one, too. So let's chat about a few resources of where to find, find these things. Mm -hmm. So you can either find somebody or you can personally find the list yourself or you can uh, go to a big data provider. Uh, you know, one that we use is, is a company called ListSource and get it get it um, yourself. But first, you may want to try to figure out how to get it yourself or have somebody do that for you. And I know that most it can be of, cheaper that way, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's cheaper, cheaper, and it's a little bit more effective because they're not just aggregating data; like they're actually handpicking data sure. um, by doing this. So, a lot of the if you go to like any local RIA group, there's typically somebody in those RIA groups that pull this stuff and then they sell it off. Um, you know, to you know, you're not going to get like exclusivity on it, but it's you know, this public data, so you don't sure. need an exclusivity on it. It's just making sure you're actually taking action and doing the marketing. Um, so they usually pull that data and like probates. I mean, there's only so many people that die in every county per month. So there could be, you know, 10 or 50. You know, it's only going to cost you 25 bucks a month for those records. Uh, absentee owners, you know, you buy the list once and you're done. Uh, right. True. So that doesn't change. Exactly. Right. That doesn't change. That doesn't change that often. And then your farm area or properties you just bought and sold. You know, you can go to public records and pull that, or you can get somebody to to mine that, or you can just say you can go to list source and say. I mean, it's pretty much the sky's the limit. You can say um, anybody in you know these streets, this county, this much you know, first mortgage, whatever you want, you, you can do. So that's doing that. And then the next part's kind of the sexy part. It's getting this thing from you setting it up the first time. And you should set it up the first time just so you understand how it works. Mm -hmm. It's only gonna take an hour anyways, once, is the automation component of it. Yep. So we mail through a company called clickthemail.com. Click the number two, mail.com. There's lots of them that do it. 
this one just works for us because we can navigate it so quickly and it costs about 60 cents or so for a letter, 40 cents or so for a postcard. The more you mail, the cheaper it gets. Um, so what happens, it takes about an hour to you know, for the first time, upload your creative or your flyer or your letter, upload the list, um, kind of set all the configurations. And after that's set up the first time, then you literally go in there, it takes less than five minutes, you duplicate the campaign, resend. Or if you want, you can set them all up for, you know, at, you know oh, yeah. in the future yeah. if you want to pay for them all sure. then. But I don't like typically having to pay for stuff that, you know, in the future, I don't want to pay for postage for 12 months from now. I'd rather just do it monthly and it only takes five minutes. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Um, you want to talk about creatives real quick? Yeah. Letters versus postcards, which are the two most common? So, usually the way we have it set up is we do one to two letters in the first month or two, mm -hmm. and then we do postcards after that. Because postcards are cheap, they're easy, they're in your face. You know, you get them to open up the letter, and then, you know, they see your name, and then the postcard just appears, and they, if they toss it or they call you, whatever the case is. I mean, we try to make sure we have a clear call to action, you know, and a call to action sure. means, do I want this person to call me? Do I want this person to email me? Do I want this person to go to a website and get something of value? I of want course. them to call. That's the most, yeah, that's you know, the hottest that, that's the hottest one. Yeah. So I'm not going to put any other information on there at all. It's mm -hmm. just call this phone number and talk. Oh yeah, here's some right here. It's a postcard that we've used and this actually came from Josh. I don't know if you can see him in the background there, but our head real estate trainer, Josh Weidman, has been mailing and testing and getting it dialed in for years now. And a lot of stuff we've borrowed from what he's done. Um, and since we're taking a look at it, let's talk about conversion tracking really quickly. So a good way to test how effective your creatives are, how effective your marketing pieces are, is to get uh, a unique phone number. It can be an 800 number or a local number. Local numbers can uh, be a good thing local for sure. Local numbers are probably better. Local numbers are better because they know that you're local to the area. So wherever you happen to be mailing in, get an area code from that number. You can grab from Callfire, you can do it from uh, Google Voice, I believe, and have one unique one per mailing piece. So if the first month you're gonna send a postcard, you put that on there and then you count how many calls you're getting from the mailing pieces you send out. That's your conversion rate, um, or at least your call rate, response rate. Um, and then the next month, if you're gonna do, say, a letter, take another unique phone number, put it on that one, and see which one wins, sure. in essence, and then keep rolling with that one for a while, and later on down the road, do it again. Do a yellow one versus a blue one, or whatever it may be, yeah. to keep it live and to you know, uh, keep optimizing over time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a little, you know, 2.0, 2 and I mean, you can really bit. get all the way, you can get, I mean, we, we do some black belt stuff because, you know, I wanna know where our dollars are spent. And mm. I mean, if this thing costs 50 cents, I wanna make we're making sure we're getting the best, you know, yeah. for our bucks. So, I would probably say to take an action, start with one campaign and start there, build it up to two or three campaigns. Those three we just talked about, probate, absentee, and, um, you know, farm area. Those are probably, you know, those I know are, are the best. And it's not just because we do it or Josh does it. You know, I've, you know, we talk to all our real estate investors that we do loans for, and they have, and they have as well. So, I would start there, um, make sure you're setting it up, and again, it's an hour up front, and then, you know, five minutes a month after that, and I mean, right now, like, we just outsource it, so we did a video, uh, like a video screenshot of exactly how it's set up, and then we have somebody else going in and doing it, and just like that, it's automated, and, you know, it's, you know, probably the most effective way to, uh, you know, get good hot seller leads. Yeah, direct mail's number one. Don't be afraid to get off MLS, because off-market is where the best deals are, so give it a shot. Uh, check us out next time, uh, or anywhere on social media, social media, uh, hashtag the REI360 show. You can ask questions, or just look for us on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, and we will see you next time. Peace.